Hey everybody, Michaela Byers the name, and I'm going to do a little cooking show for this wonderful election year we have coming up. Yes, I know, it is kind of scary and kind of toxic and there is such partisanship and I am going to try my damnedest to have fun by doing a little cooking show honoring our commanders in chief. And why not start with the first one, George Washington. Now, for this little show, I am going to tell you all one thing I admire and one thing I do not admire about each of the people elected to office. I keep saying people, it's all been men. Hopefully we will get a woman sometime in the near future. Um, anyway, so for George Washington, uh, I'm going to make hoe cakes. They were a favorite of his and they were quite a staple in colonial diets. And he ate very bountifully at Mount Vernon where he lived with his wife, Martha. And um, these hoe cakes are pretty darn good. They're kind of like pancakes made with cornmeal. Um, but back to Washington, the person and the politician. What I admire about him is how he defined himself as the president of all peoples, not one, not one particular party, not one particular group. He genuinely wanted the presidency to be representative of everyone's needs. Uh, the big caveat though, and leading into the thing I do not admire him for is uh, what a wuss he was about slavery. Uh, he could have ended that if he had put a little bit more thrust into it, but he chose not to and there were pretty horrible consequences. Um, so yeah, bad on him. And that's going to be a running theme with the first 15 people who occupied the presidency. I was gonna say the White House, but Washington didn't actually live in the White House. Um, anyway, so let's get started. Let's make some hoe cakes. Start off with half a teaspoon of active dry yeast. Add one and a quarter cups of white cornmeal. Add one cup of lukewarm water. Stir up until you got some pancake batter looking stiff. Alrighty, you might also wanna add maybe another cup of water just to give it a little bit of that extra gooiness. And next up, cover and refrigerate for eight hours or overnight, whichever you can manage. So to give you a bit more background on that dish, uh, his step-granddaughter, Nellie, is apparently the reason that we have the recipe for this. She wrote the recipe to a friend. Oh, and there's the kitty trying to get some scraps. You can have the real thing later. Um, and it is served with honey and butter, both of which I love. So anyway, thank you, Nellie. And thank you to everyone online who helped me procure this recipe. Hope you all like it. I'm gonna go get a good night's sleep and in the morning, my lovely honeyed and buttered hoe cakes will be ready. Good morning, my darlings. We are ready to continue. Let's bring it up. Yeah, first ingredient, get yourself a good coffee or tea, whichever your preference might be, and a cute mug. Ha! Huh? Got this from a presidential library. All right, first, you're gonna take one egg and beat that egg. I have a whisk, you can also use a fork. Alright, once you've got your egg beaten, put it off to one side. Alrighty, take the batter out of the fridge. Add one cup of lukewarm water. Next up, add half a teaspoon of salt. And then the one beaten egg that we talked about earlier. Mix that all up. Next up, you wanna add the remaining one and a quarter cups of white cornmeal little by little and basically fold it in maybe with some more water um, until your consistency is kind of like waffle batter. All right guys, once you got that done, uh, what you wanna do is cover it and set it aside for 20 minutes, all right? Next up, get some butter going on a pan. All right, so what you're gonna do is get about a quarter cup of the batter, put it on there. All right, and you're gonna 
gonna have it on about for about five minutes each side. Okay. All right, so do a couple more and basically fix up however many you want. Alrighty, my darlings, there it is. We have hoe cakes, a favorite of George Washington. I'm gonna dig in. Pretty darn good. Um, again, I would put some honey and butter on it for a bit of flavoring. And um, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, next time I'm going to do a recipe from the table of President John Adams. He was actually the first president to live in the White House. Alrighty, thanks again, everybody. Bon appetit.